Imagine a sunny Tuesday morning, just like today. You open your app and call an Uber. A sleek car pulls up, doors open automatically. And when you step inside, you realize there's no driver. And a screen says, destination confirmed, enjoy your ride. The ride is going well in the self-driving car, but suddenly a child runs into the street. The car has two options, drive towards the wall and risk your life or keep going and hit the child. Who decides what the car should do? You, the engineer who coded it, the company's lawyers? Now, take that same ethical dilemma and move it from the street to the battlefield. Around the world, militaries are developing little autonomous weapons. These are machines that can identify, select and attack targets without direct human control. Supporters say they could save lives by keeping soldiers out of danger zones and reacting faster than any human could. But critics warn that once we let algorithms decide who lives and who dies, we cross an irreversible moral line. In a self-driving car, a human can still step in before the system makes a fatal mistake. But on the battlefield, when algorithms decide in milliseconds, the line between the control and chaos becomes dangerously thin. In both of these scenarios, when we ask a machine to choose who lives and who dies, we are essentially asking it to solve the famous trolley problem. The trolley problem is a philosophical thought experiment and an ethical dilemma. In the classic dilemma, a runaway trolley is heading toward five people who are tight on the track. These five people are unable to move out of the way. And you are standing near a switch. If you pull the switch, the trolley will be diverted to a side track. However, the problem is that the other track is also not empty. There is one person tied down there. You are faced with a choice. Do you pull the switch, sacrificing one person to save five, or do you do nothing and allowing the trolley to kill the five people? Well, this one seems like it has an easy answer. Sacrificing one person instead of five is the rational choice, right? But what if we change the question a bit? In the second scenario, there are again five people to one, but this time, the one person on the track is your best friend. Would you still choose to divert the track? Now, let's think about the third scenario. In this one, there are five lobsters instead of five people, and on the side track, there is only one little super cute kitty. Would you choose to save the kitty or the lobsters? What these variations show us is that the trolley problem doesn't have a single perfect solution. It has a thousand messy human ones. Because our ethical framework shifts based on relationships, on emotion, on the value we assign to a cat over a lobster. 
let's circle back to our first question. What does this self-driving car need to do? It needs to do the good thing. It needs to do the right thing, uh, right or ethical thing. But here is the catch. What does good and ethical actually mean and according to whom? For humans, good is a contextual term. It changes based on the culture, the moment, the law, and the people involved. A machine, however, is not flexible. It requires a fixed mathematical definition of good or logical reasoning to choose one over another. On the other hand, ethics are rules or principles that we use to decide what is right or wrong. And AI ethics is about doing the right thing with AI. So, as you see, we are asking an algorithm to take messy, very subjective human concept and distill them to a single clear decision tree. The danger is not that we will fail to code these values. The danger is that we will succeed in coding some values and then let the machine decide how to use them. And the greater danger is that by outsourcing this ethical decision-making process, we lose the human accountability that forces us to be better. This isn't just a hypothetical concern. We have chilling examples of danger of outsourcing our conscience to an authority or a system. Let me give you three well-known ones. In the first example, a psychologist named uh, Stanley Milgram showed how quickly people can ignore their own sense of right and wrong. In his famous obedience experiments, participants were instructed to give painful electric shocks to another person by a man in a lab coat. The astonishing result? Most obeyed. Not because they were cruel, but because an authority figure told them to do a man in a lab coat. Humans have a terrifying built-in tendency to outsource responsibility to an authority. Today, our algorithms are rapidly becoming that new lab coat. When a machine makes a decision, we are conditioned to treat it as final, as optimal, even if that decision is fundamentally wrong. In our second example, performance artist Marina Abramovic conducted a radical experiment called Written Zero. She stood silently for six hours and allowing her audience to use any of 72 objects on her body. These objects ranged from a single rose to a loaded gun. At first, people were gentle. But as the performance went on, and with no established boundaries or personal accountability, the audience's actions rapidly escalated to cruelty and violence. This is a mirror for how we build AI. If we create systems without clear ethical guardrails or human accountability, what begins as harmless can quickly escalate into systemic harm. And in the third example, 
we face the risk of systemic ethical failure. Between 1932 and 1972, the U.S. Public Health Service conducted the Tuskegee Phyllis study. This was a brutal four-decade-long exploitation where 600 black men were deceived by the U.S. health officials. They actively withheld treatment for syphilis even after penicillin became widely available as a cure. And this was just done to observe the disease's progression. It's a harrowing example of exploitation and racism being systematically placed uh, above humanity. Like in this one, if we design and deploy systems whose data, whose training data contains the biases and unfair beliefs of our past, or if we don't program the self-driving car to see all lives equally, or if we neglect to protect vulnerable populations, then history may judge us as just as harshly as how we judge the people responsible for Tuskegee now. All these examples makes one thing clear. We must build guardrails. So let's, le let's look at the emerging approaches to see how our researchers and companies attempting to tackle this uh, mountain of ethical challenge. Some approaches are practical, like compliance models that train AI to follow law. Others focus on bias and fairness frameworks to, to reduce discrimination. But then there is a more ambitious idea, machine ethics. This means AI systems that can recognize moral dilemmas and reason about values like a human would. While these ideas sound fascinating, in reality, most big AI companies are still focused on the first two. OpenAI, Anthropic, Microsoft and Google are working on models that align with human feedback, follow laws and minimize bias. True machine ethics remains more of a philosophical dream than a product for now. It's not about finding the perfect code. It's not a coding problem. It is a human problem because it's about confronting the contradictions in our own values. The biggest challenge requires global binding guardrails with legal implementations and regulations. We need international agreements that define our collective red lines and ensure accountability. This is where governments and international bodies step in. And they have actually begun to step in. So we have EU AI Act, uh, UNESCO's recommendation on the ethics of AI, um, OECD principles on AI, and so on. These, are, uh, these efforts are necessary and very important. And so we must step back and revisit our main question because maybe we are asking the wrong one. Why? Let me explain it with a great book. In the book called The Hijacker's Guide to the Galaxy, a supercomputer spends seven and a half million years calculating the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. And the answer it delivers after seven and a half million years is 42. 
Why? Because the people who asked the question never actually knew what the ultimate question was. Do you think our ultimate question needs to be can we code ethics into machines? Or maybe the better question is what kind of ethics do we want machines to reflect to us? Because AI is in many ways a mirror of us. Just like a little child, it learns from our data, our decisions, and our biases. We are building the most powerful computing system in human history. The real danger isn't that AI will be unethical. The real danger is that we haven't agreed on what ethics is. We haven't defined the ultimate question of human ethics. And yet, we are rushing to embed it into code that could govern our future. Remember, coding ethics into machines is not just a technical challenge. It is the ultimate test of who we are and who we want to become as humankind. It took me seven countries and 15 years to be able to stand in front of you uh, to give the speech. But originally I am from Turkey. And I want to conclude my speech with a quote from the founder of Turkish Republic, Atatürk, and which I believe is a universal truth for both humans and our creations. The ideal person is the one who uses their intellect and knowledge for the benefit of humanity. Because the measure of civilization has never been intelligence alone. It's how we choose to use it. Next time a self-driving Uber stops for you, I hope the code behind it comes from a species that has already found the answer together. Thank you.